Today I will show how to create this cool 3D neural network animation in Blender. I leave all the code in the description below, so feel free to check it out. And the whole process consists of two steps, creating and training the model and actually making the animation in Blender. Uh, in this tutorial, I will focus on the Blender part. Uh, we walk through the Blender code, but if you're interested in machine learning stuff, training notebook can be found as well. So the model we are going to visualize is called a multi-class logistic regression. It takes 10 by 10 image of a handwritten digit as an input and produces 10 probabilities as an output. So we get 10 predictions and we expect the maximum of those predictions to correspond to the actual digit. For example, if you show an image of the digit zero, the first value of those predictions should be highest if the model is correct. We are going to visualize uh, inputs and outputs as cubes and model also has weights. These are pretty tricky to visualize as they're static and in order to visualize how these weights interact with the inputs, I simply performed element-wise multiplication with those inputs. So you will find all this logic in the provided notebook where I export three files inputs, outputs, and weights. For now, you just need to download those files and you're good to go. Okay, so uh, now let's jump into Blender and actually make this animation happen. Just open the text editor and create a new text file for our script. Uh, I'll paste my script here for now uh, and let's see what it does. So we import three packages, BPY for executing Blender commands in Python, Vector from method tells us we are going to use this data type for visualizing weights and NumPy to load um, all the files we need. We load these files with mp.load and we provide a full path to save files. So the format will uh, become a little bit more clear as we move along, uh, but for now let's just move to functions. Uh, the first function is set material colors. It takes three parameters object, uh, a list of values, and frame now. Now, what does it do? It creates a new material, appends this material to our object, iterates through our list of values, and uses the current value as a color. It also inserts keyframes uh, with a step that is equal to the parameter frame now. For example, if you have a list of, uh, let's say, 100 values, and frame num is set to 10, this function will take the first value and set uh, a color at the very first keyframe, the second value 10 keyframes after that, and so on and so on, so uh, you get the idea. Now, uh, the second function is create cube grid, and this is for visualizing our inputs and, our, and uh, outputs as cubes. It takes five parameters. Um, and that is a tuple of two values, simply holding uh, a number of rows and columns the function has to create. Um, colors, which will be a three-dimensional array, and first two dimensions should be the same as in parameter n, and the last one corresponds to how many data samples we want to visualize. Spacing and size is for uh, controlling the size of individual cube and the gap between cubes. Uh, so this function will draw grid along x and z axis and uh, parameter y position controls the grid position along uh, y axis. Now inside this function uh, we create a cube locations array and this is for storing cube positions that will be used later on when we create these uh, uh, lines that connect inputs and outputs. So basically when we visualize weights. Uh, we iterate through our row and column indices and calculate x and z positions for uh, every cube. And these cubes are drawn left to right uh, and top to bottom. We create a cube at calculated location and simply rescale it. Uh, then we store the location as Matthew Tills vector object and we use our set material colors function to create the material. So at this point, uh, we can visualize our inputs and outputs. So uh, let's comment everything else out and let's uh, just try to do that. Uh, and 
yeah it works fine so um, I'll delete all objects for now and we can uh, continue okay uh, there are only two functions left uh, create curve object function takes coordinates of two points a list of colors uh, that is again for animation purposes and uh, thickness that controls how thick our, our line will be at first we create a new curve uh, and we set its dimensions to 3d after that we create a new spline and set the coordinates of the curve endings to be equal to the coordinates we pass to this function now uh, this plane is what curves are made of and it defines the shape of the curve and the spline type poly uh, that's because this is the simplest type blender offers so it works just fine as we only uh, you know need to model straight lines uh, we control uh, the thickness of line through bevel depth so we set it to be equal to our thickness value and uh, then we create an object from the curve uh, link it to the current scene in order to make it visual and we set object data to be equal to curve data uh, and as we did with cubes we use uh, set material colors function to create uh, uh, material and uh, the last function just takes the positions uh, of our input and output cubes you know and create uh, and creates those weights using create curve object function so that's basically it you can throw in some lighting at camera or change whatever else you like and uh, uh, you can render your animation so uh, i hope that helps at least a little bit it is a cool little project and I'm sure uh, with a little bit of work you will be able to visualize uh, more complex architectures and um, as I said the code will be available so check the description below and uh, that's it from me today uh, so uh, take care.